hurricanes have this awesome power to really change the direction of any community. These things destroy economies. Mother Nature doesn't care what names we assign. High winds are high winds, and they happen everywhere. They can do a terrible amount of damage. There's this massive ripple effect. We see communities hundreds of miles away being affected by a shortage of supplies and other infrastructure needs having to be met in that localized area. It's also chronic because it happens every year. This is what the wind does. We have to control the wind so that it doesn't destroy us. I grew up in Florida, so like a lot of people that work in this business, it's a personal subject for me. I started studying structural engineering. Along the way, I met a professor who literally said to me one day, do you want to go chase storms? And there's only one answer to that. And I was always fascinated with the idea that, wow, you know, this thing that looks like a gigantic thunderstorm, why can't we do more? We can do better. And here I am. I found my career path to working on doing better. We solve problems that ultimately people by themselves could not do, and that has a ripple effect to help people not only here in our local state, but across the nation. So as a result of the most recent events, we're beginning to see the mindset shift. We're not thinking of how a single building performs. We're beginning to think about the importance of that facility in the larger context of the community. If it doesn't work after the event, how is that going to disrupt community functioning? And more importantly, what can we do about that? Building codes are great because they protect the people. The people survive the event. We want the building to survive too, and people get on with their lives. We need your house and my house to be strong to resist whatever wind or earthquake that comes into it. For us to do that, there must be an agreement that we wish this community to survive, say till our grandchildren, a hundred years or so. This is what is absolutely necessary for a resilient community. What we study is an incredibly complex problem. Let's think about a single family home. Here we have this building, which it's not like an airplane wing. It wasn't designed to work with the wind. It has sharp edges. So as the air moves around it, it actually creates lots of turbulence. Imagine you're driving in your car, right? The window is down and you stick your hand out the window. You increase the speed till you get to 70 miles per hour the wind force on your hand. That's an idea of the wind load. Now imagine 140 miles per hour. The load on my hand is not going to be doubled. It's going to be four times as much. So all these loads are acting on the building. Where do they go? Well, we want that to go to the ground. We want it to go to the foundation. The real thing to understand with this, though, is if we don't have good connections between all of these structural members, it's going to come apart. We, as a community, have decided that we don't want to spend the, the effort or the money to have well-designed houses that can actually resist the actual wind loads that we can estimate. And that is what you see today. After doing that for 40 or 50 years, maybe 80% of the inventory of houses are inadequate for the loads that might be placed on it at that time. My question is, what failed first? What was the weak link, and how did that cascade something that happened to the rest of the structure? Those are the type of questions that we can answer in this facility. We can take a, a real two-story house and subject it to things like high winds and see what's happening and investigate exactly how things are going for all of the building components so that we can really find the answers that are going to work. We can actually go in and replicate these types of events to achieve that type of understanding. We have a new system, we call it the Flow Field Modulator, which consists of 319 fans, which are individually controllable. And that's going to allow us to develop precise flow conditions in each cell so that we can simulate the effect of these escalating winds. The things that we have found here in our research center prove by spending a dollar up front you can save four, seven, even eight dollars sometimes in future problems. This is an investment in your home and in your business to keep it strong and keep it safe, and it's a good investment. We have worked hand in glove with the Florida Building Commission 
with the Florida Division of Emergency Management to conduct the research here to provide the engineering and science solutions to build better houses. I think it really would shock a lot of people to take a look at the map of the United States and to see all of the states where there's no statewide code. There's some cities that have codes in those states, but we're not talking about third world countries here. We're talking about a map of the United States of America where there's a huge swath where there's no building code. So depending upon where you live, your builder may or may not be required to meet certain minimum conditions, but homeowners have these choices. If those communities were able to do the same things that we have done in Florida, using the Florida Building Code as an example, they can reduce their losses. Neither academia nor industry can solve this problem alone. We can't afford to work in isolation. And that's where Simpson has been heavily involved. When you go to the post home event, you're going to see them there. They are there on the ground looking to see how houses perform. And by the same token, they're seeing how their products perform. They're here at my lab asking questions right beside us. I love to work with engineers like that who are after the same thing that we're after. We rely on Simpson to be part of our team in all aspects. That's not only from the new construction side that we do, but also the forensic investigations. We rely on them for the consistency of the product. When I have a product and they say it's gonna meet a load, it meets or exceeds it every single time. So my view for the future, when a tornado comes to your town, it's not the end of the world. This is not a devastating event that ruins your whole town. We need to make sure that we're building the right way for whatever can occur where we are.